Sup guys, he King here bringing you uh, another review, manga review, to uh, own this week's Black Clover chapter 322. Remember to like and subscribe, comment down below if you want to share. And yeah, let's go through this uh, pretty epic chapter really. So last week we ended up with Asta wounded as hell going in to fight Lucifero who was uh, busy fighting a uh, Yuno and yeah it doesn't look good for him okay it looks like he's gonna collapse at any second or get killed keep in mind uh, none of the attacks that Yuno and Merolina are throwing at him are doing anything and he's pretty much very strict on trying to get to Asta and finish him off because clearly Asta's anti-magic is the only thing that can harm him so yeah we'll continue off from where we left off with him walking towards him only for a uh, nut to come in, or knight if you will, uh, the vice captain of the Black Bulls, which this chapter is called, the vice captain of the Black Bulls. So yeah, very uh, a lot of focus on his character for this chapter. And he's like, he, he cannot fight, you know, nut, nut is trying to protect all knight. I'm just going to call him knight because that's literally what his name translates to from German to English. So yeah, nut or knight, knight. So yeah, knight tries to stop him. But Asta's like, you know, he's very determined to push on, you know, he, he doesn't want anyone standing in his way. So, and even Nacht realizes this, he realizes that, um, you know, Lucifero cannot be defeated without Asta's anti-magic. And at this point, he pretty much tells him that, you know, he's not alone and that, you know, the wolf will be fighting him. And he armors up going into his uh, devil union form, uh, whichever that one is. Um, and yeah, from the distance we can see the explosions and the fight getting very intense as Yuno and Mariola are pretty much keeping up with him, surprisingly, which is uh, still unexpected. It's crazy that all the other captains got pretty much wiped off the ground, uh, and Mer Meryl is still the one standing. And we get this awesome, we get this awesome panel here, like these lo these awesome panels of them both uh, fighting Lucifero from each side. You got you got Yuno on one side, you got Meryl on one, and jumping in. And this is one awesome, crazy shot where Meryl almost crutches or sticks to the wall like like Spider Man. Well, you know, it's coming from the side. It's it's such it's it's just so awesome. Like I love I love her. She's a great bloody character, and she jumps in trying to go for a punch while you know trying to go for a hit from the side, and yeah, it doesn't it, it's not working, guys. I mean, you know, it's hitting him. He is hitting him, but it's just having no effect, uh, as you know himself reflects. Not a single attack of ours has been affected. Uh, effective. On the other hand, if we take so much as a single hit, was yeah, yeah, and he's right. As a, he pretty much says that as himself, if they get hit once by him, they're pretty. It's like swatting a fly, basically. That's what Lissu Farrell is trying to do to these guys. Once he hits them, it's pretty much over for them. But um, the fact that they're able to keep up, like, is insane. And, and seriously, Meryl's expect. Am I even saying that? Am I saying that right? Mer Mer Meryl Leo. Her expressions here, as, as in this sort of hell blazing form, it's just a bloody thing of beauty. Like, oh, it, it's great. And then, of course, we get a Lucifero's thoughts here as well, where he's like, Why must I deal with these worms? I need to get to that damn rat. As, yeah, he's determined. He wants to kill Asta because he himself even knows that kid is, is pretty much his, you know, main opponent. Like, he, he has the potential to hurt him. And then finally, of course, and we get the name of the demon that's been, or the devil that's just sort of been standing on the sidelines watching this fight. And we we get their name, and it's uh, Ad 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 Adram Adramel Adramel Ich Melchian. I Adramelchian. I don't even know, man. Like from my from my understand. Black Clover is based on demon mythology, or at least the demons in this are based on actual demons from mythology. So I'm gonna go on Google right now, and yeah, here we go, at, at one and uh, and and see what we can find. find wow, that's a, a, interesting here. Like yeah, this is the, this character was in a uh, Final Fantasy, so okay. But l l let's read what they say here. So there's different interpretations here from people like account and that. So. Uh, the go uh, okay, man, uh, blah blah blah. Um, interpretation, hmm. Demiology, let's go. What let's see what they say about demiology. Like many pagan gods, and this is Wikipedia, by the way, so uh, forgive me for waiting for Wikipedia. Like many pagan gods, uh, Adramelachi is considered a demon in some Judo Christina traditions, so he appears in Milton's Paradise Lost, where he is a fallen angel who, along with Asmodeus, is vanquished by Uriel and Raphael. According to Colin Din Plancy's book on demiology, Infernal Dictionary, 
uh, Adra Melledge became the president of the Senate of the Demons. He is also the Chancellor of Hell and Supervisor of Satan's Wardrobe. He is generally depicted with a human torso, a mule's head, a peacock tail, and the limbs of a mule or peacock in the... Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, the most interesting detail is here is that he's the president of the Senate of the Demons, and he is also the Chancellor of Hell and the supervisor of Satan's wardrobe. So uh, if, we're, if we're supposed to take, if this character is influenced or inspired by him, uh, one could uh, almost uh, take this as a meaning that this dude is responsible for Lucifero's wardrobe, if we're supposed to take into, the, into account that Lucifero is basically supposed to be the Satan of the uh, demon underworld. Uh, which is very funny, but also because this dude almost comes across or sounds like he's the second or, or one of the, you know, big hotshots in demon uh, demonology, or in this case, the underworld. So it is a very curious thing. I mean, this dude does seem like he, he could be powerful. Like, I mean, he just sort of standing there. The fact that Lucifer himself even tells this dude to do something, like, he's not, to, oh, he's not like just sort of like, oh, this guy can handle He's literally telling him to help out deal with them and, and he and his answer is just hilarious and he's just like in the most bored uncaring way he's just like uh, I'd rather not and yeah Lucifero insults him and he's like well what can I say Lucifero son watching you fight is just way too much fun haha <laughs> and Meryl responds with the best thing looks like you aren't too popular are you you <laughs> And yeah, uh, I, I, I like to I like to think if there is a hierarchy here of demons and Lucifer is at the top, uh, some of the demons at the bottom would properly not be very comfortable with him being the big dog here. And I feel like it shows with how uh, how am I even going to pronounce this Adram? I'm going to call him Adramel. How Adramel responded to him? Um, he clearly like like even Meryl says he's uh, Lucifer is not popular. Properly, there are probably demons. Who are waiting for him to get defeated so they can uh, position themselves at the top spot, right? So it, it could be a case that Adramel Admir is one of those demons who just, who, you know, now that he's in the human world, he has no reason to follow Lucifero's orders now. Like he's technically free to do whatever he wants. And he is just sort of sitting there watching this fight going to see what will happen. Is it a case where if things get too serious, he is going to jump in and help Lucifero? Or is it going to be a case where he's going to jump in and help defeat him at the last second if he sees the opportunity and maybe make himself into like the big bad? Or he's actually a friendly or somewhat curious demon who doesn't want to do anything that Lucifer wants to do in terms of like, I want to kill or harm all the humans. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see how that progresses. But at the moment, for me, that character is the most interesting one out of the demons that we've gotten. Like, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he's giving he's giving me the vibes of a character who who is very powerful, but he's not showing it at the moment. But yeah, we continue on with the fight with Mero, and we get this panel here, which is kind of insane, where her she's trying to go for a punch, and she's not in a hell form, and her arm disappears. Like this part of the arm, if you will disappears it's almost like she's pure flame at this point and she even says it my body i can't hold its shape and adromel even responds ah oh, and you were doing so well but you got too close to mana well those are human boundaries i guess like it's interesting like uh and lucifer responds with scatter and he pretty much knocks her out and she falls and he goes off to you know now like you coming in and he punches you know but he manages to block himself with a blade and he gets slammed all the way to the back so um, yeah it's interesting about Meryl here though like the fact that she's in this form that could and it looks like potentially could actually kill her so you you know is she is she gonna die as this fight goes on because at this point it almost seems like she needs to shut off that power it almost looks like uh, like a version of you know if I had to make a comparison it's all oh, it's almost something similar to uh, guys uh, uh, you know eight gates from Naruto in this case she's you know, hit this sort of level of higher power, and the more she keeps at it, the more powerful it becomes, the more powerful she becomes, but at the cost of her own life, to the point where she's literally turned into mana, or her body has turned into mana, it's consumed, it's taken all this energy in, and now she's become pure energy, or in this case, sort of spirit-like, so what does this mean, like, I think it's pretty obvious that she's going to vanish or disapparate, so she needs to shy off, she needs to shy off, otherwise she is going to be in very serious danger, uh, otherwise, they, you know, we wouldn't have gotten that panel of our bloody part of our arm just disappearing, so yeah, it, it, this is, it looks like a case of, you know, you want to remain human, or you want to die, like, you know, in, in, in glorious hellfire, like, you know, pit, take your pick, like so. 
So look, look, you know, look after that hit from uh, you know that he, that he gave to you know, he looks around to look for uh, what's his name, Asta, that Brad. Where did he go? And I can't really make out what's going on. We see, see some sort of tent here, maybe, or, or the shadows coming out. But uh, there's Nucked coming out with his Devil Union, if you will. And he attacks Lucifero with his Devils. And it's like Hound Devils really chained up. Uh, and each one bites Lucifero's right arm, and another one bites the left arm. And they basically pick him up. It's crazy. And you got all the chains coming out from uh, Nucked. And it, it's called Mold Canis X Equus. I don't know what that translates to. Uh, is there a translator here? And usually, usually you have uh, people. You no, know, there's no translator here. But uh, yeah, Lucifer just doesn't seem bothered by this. But at the moment, he is he is trapped, and the Asta comes in for for a hit from I don't know. I think from the back again this time, and and Noct is just basically reflecting out. Even if it costs him a life, you know he's gonna stop him. But it's it's pointless because yeah, as Lucifer himself even says, pointless. He destroys the dogs that have, you know, have bitten him and grabbed him, uh, much to Nox shock. And Asta, like at this point, is at Lucifero's mercy, and he's like, "There you are, you damn brat." He goes in for the hit, goes in for the finishing move that will get him killed. But instead, Nox ends up, you know, coming in from the shadows and goes up to guard Asta with his life. So yeah, it looks like Nucked or Knight is about to die, he's about to say his last words and you've even got, you know, Asta getting very worried for him and concerned to the point where he's like, Vice Captain Nug, don't. And yeah, it, it, this is it. It looks like this is the chapter where he dies, a shame really. And uh, we get this, we get, we get these last thoughts of him where he's like, you know, he's reached his limit and he's now going to be able to die and meet his brother and apologise to him. Which is a very interesting thing to do though, to say though, because like, um... Is, is there even a heaven? I mean, we've got we've got we've got the underworld, but it technically doesn't mean that that's hell. Do you know what I mean? That's just another dimension. You know, you've got the human side, and then you've got the demon side. Okay, and obviously you've got stuff like elves and dwarves. So the de demons in this case, or devils, are ju are just another race. That doesn't mean technically that there is a hell and heaven. So what does this mean? Do you know what I mean? And he's saying that he's going to apologize and see his brother Morgan, but uh, surprise, surprise, a black orb of sorts appears. Uh, behind uh, Nucked or, or above him. I, I don't know. I can't really tell what's going on here with the action and from it Yami comes in and blocks Lucifero's attack. You know, he blocks his punch from from striking and hitting Nucked whose demon union uh, uh, Whatever has just disappeared and there's Yami with a new sword made out of wood Okay, it looks like it's made out of wood. You can tell that vengeance or vengeance or William it made this for him basically or maybe even Patry made it for him but oh, I think I think it's Bungeons because he's the one that deals with the whole wood and uh, a tree stuff so clearly he's given him a weapon here and you've got you've got yeah and it's like it's crazy because this is a reunion between these two they haven't seen they haven't seen themselves in years it, it looks like and yeah the chapter ends with a long time no see want to tell me what the hell you think you're doing vice captain and it's like yeah he saves his vice captain's life takes the bloody hit like the, the sword is able to take the hit it looks like and yeah, Yami's in the fight now. So we've got Yami entering the fight, maybe able to turn the events. And I gotta say this one thing, right? One of my one of my favorite battles, or if you will, final battles in an arc, has to be the fight. It has to be the fight with the word with the word demon Zagred, because I like the fact that you have so many different characters coming in, teaming up to fight this one uh, a villain, basically. Um, for me. Uh, if an arc can always end like that, where you've got multiple characters coming in, each providing some sort of help, for me that's a big huge highlight because it, it illustrates that it takes a lot of people to defeat one powerful foe. Like it's not like an ass pool where suddenly someone's got a big power up and they manage to kill him. No, it, it takes a lot of characters. And I'm liking how this fight with Lucifero right now has a lot of characters involved. You know, the captains are wiped out at this point, but they're not dead. They could get up at any minute now or get healed and provide some sort of advantage and help in the fight. But at the moment, you've got Asta, you know, uh, you have Nox there, you've got Mimosa as the healer and Seke watching from the background, and now you've got Yami jumping in with, with a sword built by Vengeance that can withstand Lucifero's punch, it looks like. So, yeah, the big question now comes down to what, what about the other characters? Are they going to pop him? Is William going to pop him? I don't think he is. I think he's still too injured or wounded to help out 100%, and that's why we've already got that point where he just made that weapon. If anything, he's probably going to use whatever strength or magic he has to heal Asta and maybe the captains in order 
for them to all team up and maybe combine their powers and abilities together to try and take this dude out. But the big question comes down to whether Lucifero is going to meet his end in this arc. Very likely Lucifero is going to get hurt and he's going to run away and he'll come back later in the story as every character tries to deal with the aftermath of the state of the Spade Kingdom. Or he is going to get defeated. We're going to get a good volume of this dude and he is going to get defeated. Uh, uh, you know, Le Lieb is going to get his revenge. He's going to wake up eventually. He's going to get his revenge. And then at the end he's going to explain to Asta who this guy was to him and what he did in terms of killing his mother. And then Adromel, depending on if he is a bad guy, he's going to reveal he all gonna be revealed as the second in command and be a big shot in terms of like oh crap this dude is the one we should have been worrying about instead and he's gonna run off do whatever it is he's gonna do and then he's gonna come back as the big powerful bad guy towards the end of the series maybe or, or it's just like every arc we've gotten so far and it builds upon upon uh, all the different villains in that arc so you know we had we had like Patri, Licht, and then, uh, if you will, uh, Zagret in that first big sort of saga of the series. And now here we have the Dark Triads moving on to Lucifer, moving on to higher devils potentially, or devils that we didn't think were high enough, but in fact are as powerful as this dude. Or maybe we're going to get introduced to angels or something, or even the concept of God maybe. I don't know, but... Uh, for now, I am liking uh, the fight, I'm liking the final battle that we're getting here, and I'm just, I'm very curious to see who else is going to get involved and how this fight is going to end, because it, it, it's been a freaking highlight so far. Uh, that said, I re if there's one character I want to see get involved and help out in a way, it has to be Zorin, because uh, I, 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 I'm sure he, he trained up on that and improved on magic in that. I think the last time we saw him, he was in that... He was observing the fight between Magna and Dante, but I don't think we've seen him do anything great or special at the moment. So I'm hoping he gets involved and does something. Uh, but yeah, great fight, uh, great chapter as always. Yami's in, Yami's in, and uh, I'm hoping to see what's going to happen next. Uh, can't wait. And that's my review for this week's uh, Black Clover chapter. Yeah, guys, it was a good chapter. Like, um, yeah, I love it. And yeah, can't wait to see what happens next. Uh, but yeah, and remember guys, as always, to like and subscribe. Please do, it helps. And yeah, it's kind of crazy because uh, it, feel, it feels like we're getting a chapter every few days and not every week, if that makes sense. You know, I just feel like I just posted my uh, review on this the other day and now, now this chapter pops up. So it's like, oh my God, like, like it, it, they're coming up fast, aren't they? But uh, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. Cheers, guys, and take care, yeah? Appreciate it.